Hi, I'm Ray from the Radio Workshop. Welcome to another one of my videos about naughty things in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, in other words, media wave, pirate, well, and shortwave. Got my coffee. Early Monday morning, pouring with rain down here on the south coast of the UK. So, we're ready to go. Oh, by the way, this isn't a 100 watt modulator for an AM, 200 watt AM transmitter for medium wave, unfortunately. It's a KT88 stereo amp, meant to be about 50 watts per channel. And chap wants me to have a look at it. It doesn't work, apparently. So I said I'd have a quick look. Anyway, that aside, if it was a modulator, we'd take more interest in that, but it's not. Mind you, it could be. I've only got to change uh, the output transformer on one of the channels. Build a transmitter. No, no, no. What am I saying? Okay. Um, medium wave pirating and not getting caught. That's what it was all about back in the good old days. Uh, and the giveaway was your aerial. Now, for medium wave, you need a good aerial. No good having a piece of wire hanging out of the window. So, how do you hide an aerial, a piece of wire? You can't. So, what was the answer? Over the years, people tried all sorts of things, you know, alternate locations and aerials far away from the transmitter and all sorts of things like that. Uh, one chap that I knew, um, now this was nothing to do with, with me, I always have to put this disclaimer in. I know now, I think, now I think, okay, I'm just telling you what happened. I wasn't there. <laughs> Happy days. What this chap did, he had a homemade transmitter, uh, AM transmitter, modulator, you know, he built a modulator, I forget what the valves were, but, um, and he had a, a decent aerial in the garden, he had his complete radio station all set up, okay, the transmitter, a receiver as well, um, and he had it all set up in the back room of his house, big aerial, and he'd, he'd go on there on Sunday mornings on medium wave, uh, not every Sunday morning, but in those days, Sunday morning, 11 o'clock-ish, was the medium wave pirate radio time. Tune around anywhere, oh, I would say anywhere in the UK, uh, on a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, there were transmitters popping up all over the place. Uh, yeah, excellent, great fun. And of course the GPO, they were the kind of authority, it's Ofcom now, isn't it? And actually, I think Ofcom have given up, haven't they? I think they've now passed uh, pirate catching uh, over to the BBC. I, I don't know what's happening. I mean, I wouldn't because I'm not involved in pirating, of course, so I, I know nothing. <laughs> anyway, so this chap, he went on the air every Sunday, only for an hour, 11 to 12, with his pre-recorded programme. Um, great it was great great fun and he, he had a, a good I think the transmitter was about 50 watts uh, so you know, it was a decent transmitter good quality decent aerial and he did get some good coverage you know it didn't just sort of do locally it really did cover a good area um, and of course inevitably one Sunday morning the GPO Morris thousand van he was he always looked out of the window, upstairs window, up and down the street, waiting for the van. He knew it would turn up, and it did. A couple of things before I go on. One or two people have said, what's that humming on all the videos in the background? It's the computer fans, the computer's over there, and it kind of, the mic picks it up. Um, I forget what the other thing was. <laughs> A couple of things. Anyway, don't worry about that. Um, right, yes, yeah, so he, he saw the van, it pulled up. Uh, he, he told me it, it pulled up next door, in fact, uh, he could see it. So he rushed downstairs to the back room, transmitter, not off, but onto standby, okay, transmitter onto standby, um, waited for the knock on the door, which did come, uh, and he opened the door, hello, uh, they said, hi, we are the GPO, blah, 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 and he was all kind of, um, as he put it, gushing like, Oh, wow, GPO, excellent, yeah, come in, come and see my transmitter, come and see my gear. And of course, these two GPO lads were sort of looking at each other, uh, strange, you know. So, uh, you know, he, he invited them in and he took them through to the back room and there's the transmitter. Okay, and it's switched on, all right, it's on standby, but it's switched on, ready to go. Um, 
of course, the, these. I, I think he, he said the GPO chaps sort of didn't know what to say. They're sort of looking at each other, looking at the gear. They must have thought, well, this is an easy cop. <laughs> you know, the bloke's brought us into the house and he's showing us the gear. And apparently they did say to him, you know, we are from you know the GPO. You do realise who we are. And he said, oh, yes, yes, yes. He said, yeah, yeah of course. And he said, oh, come outside, I'll show you the aerial. So that, you know, they saw the aerial out in the back garden and <laughs> they obviously couldn't believe them. They probably thought he was mad. Um, he made them a cup of tea, apparently. I'll have a cup of tea while you're here. And he's telling them all about the, the transmitter and how he built it and what valves it used, blah, blah, blah. And he's going on like this. And he said to me that one of them took a great interest because one of them, you know, he was uh, a radio amateur and he built his own gear and he was taking a great interest, you know, going through sort of the transmitter and the modulator and where he got the modulation transformer from. <laughs> and while uh, it, it was like good cop, bad cop, he reckoned, while the other guy, this one was taking an interest, the other guy was poking around. He was obviously looking for the, you know, tape recorder, reel to reel, or cassette tape recorder, record decks or wherever, some sort of studio. Um, you know, for, for the, the music and the audio for the for the radio station. Um, anyway, what happened eventually was that this other chap said, Have, you know, where's your tape recorder? And he said, oh, oh, I'll show you. He took them into the lounge, into the front room. There's my tape recorder. There's my hi-fi amp, uh, which he'd built himself. So he starts gushing with enthusiasm about this valve hi-fi amp he'd built. And the, the other chap said, no, no, no. Um, he said, is this the tape recorder you use, you know, with the transmitter? And he said, uh, no, no, I don't use a tape recorder. You know, I've got a microphone, I don't use a tape recorder. And the chap says, what, you said, no, hang on, what do you do? You run an audio lead from this tape recorder through. He said, right, what I want to do is hear what's on this tape. There was a tape on the, on the machine. Uh, so, you know, the, this friend of mine is kind of scratching his head. Yeah, OK, oh, you're into music. He said, right. And what happened to be on the tape at the time was some uh, Led Zeppelin. So and I think that's what he said. Anyway, he played them some of that. And they say, no, where's the, you know, the, the, the radio station tape, you know, the DJ and all this. And then he, you know, my, my mate started to come across as confused himself. Uh, he said, but DJ, he said, what do you mean DJ tape recorder? This is where I listen to my music. This is my hi-fi gear in the lounge. And, um, they all, and apparently they all went back into the, the back room where the transmitter was. And this GPO chap by now was getting a bit frustrated. Uh, and he said, what we're going to have to do is confiscate your gear. That was the other thing I was going to mention. <laughs> Several people have said, have you noticed how the coffee cup keeps appearing and disappearing? Now you see it, now you don't. Oh dear, it's funny. And someone else on a forum I read somewhere said about my videos, uh, yeah, good videos, but he drones on a bit. <laughs> I love it, drones on a bit. I suppose I do. I suppose it's exciting though, isn't it? Talking about the good old days. So anyway, my mate comes across then as kind of shock horror. What? Confiscate my gear? Well, what have I done? What? What's happened, you know? Um, and they said, well, you know, transmitting on medium wave illegal transmissions on medium wave. That's what we're talking about. Um, and he said, no, no, no. And he said, no, no, there's nothing wrong with my gear. Check my gear. And he had a, in those days, you had to have a wave meter uh, or some some form of uh, you know, instrument to find out, to check that you're on the correct frequency. Okay, what people used to do, there was one wave meter in the town and if there was a GPO visit planned, it would go, you know, the people would pass it round. Um, not many people got GPO visits in those days. Amateur radio stations, I mean. But uh, anyway, he had this wave meter. And he said, no, no, I, I, you know, I'm on the correct frequency. And, and apparently this chap said, yeah, I know you are. We've heard it on medium wave. We know what frequency you're transmitting on. And of course, you know, my, my friends getting all coming across as all confused and like, well, you know, check my gear now while you're here. Check that it's on the right frequency. You know, I'll connect the, you know, the gear up, I'll put the wave meter there and let's check it properly. And, uh, the, you know, the GPO chats were saying, no, 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 
you know, we know what we know that you're on whatever frequency it was. We know that we've been listening on medium wave. We tracked it down to here to you. You've shown us the gear and all this. So, yeah, my mate saying, well, I don't understand all this. I don't understand. I, you know, you want to confiscate my all my equipment. You know, I don't quite know if I'm causing interference. You know, at least give me a chance to correct that. And um, of course, again, the GPO blokes are kind of scratching their heads. You know, what, what is this bloke? You know, what's he on? We've caught him red-handed, pirating, transmitting on medium wave. He's shown us the gear, the aerial, everything, and he's saying, oh, "If I'm causing interference, give me a chance to correct it." Yet you know, they were stunned. I'll now tell you what he did about the audio, the tape recorder. What he did, okay, the mic socket, you know, the audio input on the transmitter, on the modulator part of the transmitter, jack socket, a lead out of the back window, uh, next door neighbour's house, into there, his neighbour had the tape recorder with the pre-recorded programmes on. Okay, so there was no way they were going to find the, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of the studio or any recorded tapes, pre-recorded tapes or whatever, record decks, records, there was none of that there. Um, so you know, when he saw the van, transmitter on standby, bash on the wall, wire of the window, his mate pulled the, the wire, you know, the audio cable into his place, job done. So all they've got is a transmitter and aerial. Well that's enough, you'd think that's enough. But uh, of course they were on about this uh, causing interference, he's coming across as oh my goodness, you know, shock horror, causing interference. Um, the other thing he did when he saw the van pull up, the, the VFO, it was a, a variable frequency oscillator for the transmitter. Now this wasn't homemade. If I remember correctly, it was made by Rhys Mace. Uh, they made a lot of, you know, some decent transmitting gear in the old days. And a lot of the military stuff, the, the VFO, would, would cover just into medium wave a little bit. So you'd go down, uh, say it was sort of, I don't know, 1.6 megs up to whatever, up to 12 megs. That 1.6, you could often go in you know, a little bit further, 1.5, even 1.4 megs, so you're into medium wave. You, know, you wind that to the end of its sort of travel and you're in medium wave on the VFO. Uh, then it's just a question of loading up the aerial. Um, so what he did, he moved the VFO to, I think, something like you know 1.9 megs, which was an amateur band. Okay, top band, 160 meter amateur band. So, onto standby, audio lead out the window, bash on the wall, audio lead disappears. VFO, onto the 160 meter amateur band. Um, the, to load the aerial, just give those a twiddle. You know, the, the, uh, the ATU, twiddle that, so it's not on the medium wave frequency. And then let them in, which is exactly what happened. So, by now, both the GPO blokes are getting a bit fed up with this, you know, they've, they know it's him, they, they, there's the gear, they want to confiscate the gear, um, and he is, you know, trying to confuse my, my mates saying, oh, I'm not on medium wave, and I, you know, I'm not causing interference rather on medium wave. Uh, he then said, um, look, you're right, you don't want to check my gear. He said, I can assure you that I was on the 160 meter amateur band. And then the GPO chaps are kind of again, what you're playing music or running a sort of radio station on an amateur band, you know that's sort of in a way that's even worse. <laughs> and he's no, 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 no. I, I wasn't playing music. I don't play music. I was actually on the amateur band. You know, I, I what I do on Sunday mornings is I have a chat on on the amateur bands, uh, and then they they're then saying, well. <laughs> We heard you on medium wave playing music. You're saying that you were illegally transmitting on the amateur band. You know, either way, we've got you. And then you may have guessed. You may have guessed by now. He said, no, hang on a minute. He said, I see what's going on here. Ah, I'm with you. I see what's going on. Opens the drawer of the desk where all the gear is. Rummages, bit of paper. There's my amateur radio license. I've just refilled the coffee cup so it won't be moving for a while. 
Uh, of course, then the GPO blokes are saying, well, why didn't you tell us? Why the hell didn't you tell us? And he said, well, I thought you knew that. He said, I thought you'd come here to, you know, inspect the station, which is, it says in the license, you know, if the GPO turn up to inspect the station, you have to give them access, blah, blah, blah. And he said, you know, you, later on, you're going on about medium wave and interference. He said, I thought that's, you know, I thought you knew I was an amateur, a licensed amateur. And they said, no, 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 he said, we track you down as a pirate. And, because <laughs> then it was a funny old situation because then the GPO blokes were obviously thinking, well, so where is the transmitter? Who, who was it? If it's not him, who was it? I don't know whether they still thought it might be him. I don't know. So all this confusion, uh, yeah, I haven't forgotten. I've just come into that. Yeah. Ah, uh, what was I saying? Anyway, he did say over the back of his place were allotments. And he did say, uh, he said, oh, now, now it's all sort of coming together, the picture. He said, I think what's happened is over the back there a few weeks back, there were some you know, teenage lads and they were pirating on medium wave. He said, I think this is where it's all got confusing. You thought it was me. You've come here. It was actually them over on the allotments. Uh, I thought you'd come to inspect my amateur radio station. Uh, you know, total confusion. Anyway, they asked about the blokes over the back, who didn't exist, of course. And he said, I don't know. He said, I just happened to see out of the you know, back window upstairs some blokes over there putting up a wire. And he said, I just assumed it was them. The moral of the story is, or was in those days, I remember a friend of mine saying to me, if anyone wants to do any kind of serious pirating, the way to do it is to get yourself an amateur radio license. That Your license allows you to own and operate transmitting equipment on the proper frequencies, of course, not on medium wave. Um, you know, aerial, anyone comes round, I'm a radio amateur, of course I've got an aerial, of course I've got a transmitter, uh, of course I don't transmit on medium wave. But um, there we are, happy days. That, that was that was quite interesting because this, this chap, this friend of mine was a very vivacious type of character anyway, all enthusiastic and, um, you know, the, the gushing type of, of person. So, you know, the GPO obviously initially thought what is, he, they did say, that's right, they said at one point, uh, well, you're very, very honest. And he again, uh, I forgot that bit, they said, well, you're very honest when he was saying, this is the transmitter, it's 50 watts and there's the air. They said, well, you're very honest about it, you know, which, which is uh, good, we appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, good fun. There's a, another story I'll, I'll relate, not not now, but some other time in the future. Uh, this chap, was his dad was a radio amateur, and his dad built all his own gear and that, um, and he's, he's, he worked, did shift work, so his dad was often working on a Sunday, which left the transmitter just sitting there. Um, crystal control one this time, so medium wave crystal, plug that into the transmitter, load the aerial, bit of music into the mic socket, off you go. But that's a story for another day. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed listening to this one. I must admit, I do, I love thinking about, you know, about the old days, recollecting the, the things that happened. They really were good times. So I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed telling it. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.